together. We are all together. That's God's plan. It is God's plan that we be together. It is God's plan. That's God's plan. It is God's plan. That we be together. It is God's plan. He wants oneness. He wants unity. But we have to follow that pattern. We are laboring together with Christ. With God. You are laboring together with God. And we are part of the personal tree. Read the book. You are God's building. You are God's building. According to the grace of God. Read. You are given to me as a wise master builder. Uh huh. I have laid the foundation. Right. And another builder thereon. And what? But let every man take heed to how he built it thereon. For for what? For other foundations can For other foundations. Can no man lay except the Lord build? They do labor in vain. No other foundation. God does not recognize none of these other man-made started religions of the two. It's amazing to me that those religious institutions they tell you in their name what they are doing. But none of them tell you who those religious institutions belong to. Catholic. That word that simply means what? Universal. That's not what it means. Oh, but I believe that. Because there is only one church for this entire universe. (laughs) Only one name. But the Catholic church in that name does not tell you to whom the Catholic Church belongs to. Now, brothers and sisters, here in the If King Jesus the Christ, if King Jesus the Christ is the head of the church, then I know good and well, and vice versa, if the bishop or if the pope is the head of the Catholic Church, then the Catholic Church cannot be the body of Christ. Because Christ is the head of the church and not the Pope. You take Presbyterian. Oh, the word Presbyterian just simply means an organized way of doing things. Oh, but the Bible tells us that, does it not? The Bible tells us in Acts 14, 23, and Titus 1, verses 1 through 5. You remember when Paul left Titus on that wicked island creek? And he told them to set things in order, the things that are lacking God. And then you ordain elders in every church. So I believe in that. I believe in the organizational structure. But the word Presbyterian does not tell you to whom that church belongs to. Let's go to the Bible. Pentecost. Let me show you just how unlearned man is. Pentecost. Is not a religion. Pentecost is not a church. Right. Pentecost is a day. <laughs> and when the day of Pentecost was yeah. put in charge, yeah. Pentecost is a day. Yeah. And all it means is fifth pence means fifth yeah. The Lord is square building, the Lord is square foot building in this United States is what? Come on out with your hands up. You all know that. The Pentagon. Now, why is it called the Pentagon? Because it got five sides. Mm-hmm. That's all it means. And people today have taken that Bible word and have made a religion out of it. And that folk just going up in there losing their soul. It's wrong, friend. We don't mean no harm. We try to help people. Yeah. It's wrong. Pentecost is just a day. Acts 2 and verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully yes, 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 yes. And people have made a religion out of it. Mm-hmm. Now let me ask you this question. And I can go on and on. With Baptists or with Methodists uh-huh. believe in a methodical way of doing things. Oh, we believe that. We have to do it, friend. We have to have structure. Yes, sir. We must have structure in the New Testament church. Do we not have structure in the way we worship God? Do we not have structure when, when uh, whoever welcomes the 
church and said, Brother, this is going to be leading the singing, and this brother is going to be uh, doing the opening prayer, this brother is going to be doing the closing prayer, this brother is going to be waiting on the Lord's table, and nobody can tamper with that procedure. Amen. That's the structure. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the elders say, or whoever is in, in charge of, of, of getting out, that's where the rock is at. That's what we follow. That's right, that's right. How many times? We said we're going to sing one song, one verse of a song, because we got 10 or 15 song leaders, and we want to give every song leader a chance to sing. How many times do you see somebody come up here? I'm going to sing two songs. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to follow. Come on, huh? Come on. Because if you can say two, the next man can say two, and the next man can say two, and the next man can say two, and God is not pleased with that prayer. First Corinthians 14 and verse 4. Let all things, not some things, let all things be done in the next and in order. We must have order. Amen. If we don't have order, then everything is out of order, and God is not going to be We're in violation of that passage. We must have structure. Yes, yes. We've got to have structure. Come on. I know some people don't like that. Because some people think they can just do anything they want to do. Yeah. Anything yeah. they want to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we're going to follow that in religion. Yeah. You don't go out to Walmart and do what yeah. you want to do. Yeah. You don't go out there that mall and do what you want to do. I know you don't do that what you want to do when you go down there to that police station. Come on. Come on. I know you don't do what you want to do down there. When you go to that courthouse, you don't do what you want to do. You get as humble as you can be. When you stand before that judge, you are under control. Tell me you can't control yourself. Tell me you can't control yourself. We must have structure. And I believe that. Now let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What church? Ask this question. Do I have to be a member of your church in order to go to heaven? Uh, Ask the denomination person that. You don't think I'm telling you, no. Uh, you don't have to be a member of my church. You can be a member of any church. You know the next question I'm going to ask them. Uh, well, why on earth does your church exist if I don't have to be a member? Uh, 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 it has no reason to exist if I don't have to be a member of it. You've got to be a member of the New Testament church. Amen. Amen. You must be. Uh -huh. And you have to have structure. So certainly, we know, since we follow in the footsteps of King Jesus the Christ, mm -hmm. and we know Ephesians 4 and verse 4 says, there is only one who has got a spirit, even as you're called. And the one who you call him along with faith. And of course, there is one that him. And then, Christ, as we've already said in Colossians 1 24, is the head of his church. And with all of this irrefutable evidence, what do Baptists say? Well, I'm following John the Baptist. Let me tell you something, friend. John was not the bridegroom, he was just a member of the wedding party. That's all he was. He was just a member of the wedding party. And that word Baptist. It's mentioned in the Bible only 14 times in your New Testament. And you will never ever see it mentioned a Baptist. It's always with the definite orders of these. Go over there to Luke chapter 1. And as a matter of fact, that boy name, let's see what that boy name was. Let's go there to Luke 1. Luke 1. I want everybody to turn over there. Let me clear this up before we move. John the Baptist's head was cut off. He was dead and he was buried before Christ had accepted his church. And if you're following John the Baptist, meaning a Baptist religion, you got a no headed daddy to follow. That's what you're following. You got a no headed daddy. Come on. And John the Baptist was not that boy's name. What's his name? In Luke 1 and verse 57, the book says what? It says, Now Elizabeth, the full time came that she should be delivered. Now, if I want to know what your name is, I guarantee I can ask your mama. Your mama know everything there is to know about you. She remember all those pains and all that stuff. She know everything. 
Yes, you know what she was doing that day when she had every one of those children. Yes, sir. That's something that indelibly marked in that mother's mind. So if I want to know what her children's name is, I'll ask her. Now, John the Baptist, he was the son of Zechariah and the son of Elizabeth. Right. Now, let's ask his mom what his name was. Read. He said, Our neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had shown great mercy, mercy upon her. Read. And they rejoiced with her. Uh-huh. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zechariah. That uh-huh. was the name of his father. You see what I'm saying? You know how we are. You know how we proud fathers are. So when we have our first son, we want to name him Junior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they want to name him Zachariah Junior. Yeah. Uh-huh. Read a little bit more. And his mother answered and said, What did his mama say? Not so. Not so. And he shall be called John. He shall be called John the Baptist. John. John the Baptist. John. He shall be called John. Yeah. Yeah. That's what his mama said. Yeah. 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 His mama said his name was John. Not John the Baptist. And I'm going to show you when the Baptist got put to this boy's name. His name was John. That's what was his name was. All right, read a little bit more. And they said unto her, mm-hmm. There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. Notice how they're all I mean, you don't have nobody in your family else named Zachariah. Why would you name the boy Zachariah? Read a little bit more. And they made signs to his father how he would have called him. Read. I have him called. Read. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying his name is John. Now what his dad said his name was? John. His dad is John. Come on. Yeah. Even though God had to intervene in that, he was halfway blind. <laughs> but his dad said his name was John. Yeah. That's what his dad said his name was. Yeah. So his mama said his name was John. Yeah. His dad said his yeah. name was John. Yeah. Stop down to verse number 13. Same chapter. Quick. 13. Yes, yeah, same chapter. All right. Verse 13. But the angel said unto him, Now we got an angel has come yeah. into the picture. Yeah. Right. Now this angel. You know that God used angels as messengers yes, once yes. upon a time. He doesn't use them anymore. Mm-hmm. But once upon a time, angels, that word transliterated Yion, Gilead, what we actually get the English word messenger from. That's what the word angel means when it's transliterated. Uh-huh. God used angels at one upon a time to communicate his message. Let's see what the angels say here. Fear not. Fear not. That right. That right. is heard in thy wife, the little. Shall bear thee a son, Great. and thou shalt call his name John. John the Baptist. John. John. Uh, That's what the angel says that yeah, yeah. John, would you believe that? You, do, do you believe his mother? You don't believe his daddy? You don't believe the angel? That was a message from God? Yeah. You don't believe that? Well, let's see what God called it then. Let's go to John chapter 1. Let's see what God called it. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Habakkuk. And the Havada was with God. And the Havada was God. Read. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh huh. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Read. In Him was light. And the light was the light of me. And the light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Mm-hmm. There was a man sent from God. Holy hell, was a man sent from God. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. What did God say his name was? His name was John. His name was John. His name was John. His mother said his name was John. His dad said his name was John. And Angel said his name was John. God said his name was John. Hey, you know what? I believe that boy's name was John. Yes, it. Yes. So when Sister D. Baptist was a hook to that boy's name, I'm telling you, he was commissioned to go out there in the wilderness and preach for death. That's what he back to look to his name. Yes, yes, his name was John. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And his church was not the Baptist church because the Baptist church, there was some activity of, of the active Baptist in the 600s. But that full fledged uh, reformation came about in 1607 by a man by the name of John Smythe mm-hmm. in Amsterdam, Holland. The first black Baptist church in the United States was in 1786 in Silver Bluff, South Carolina. I've been to the place many, many times. The first white Baptist church was in 1634-35 by Ezekiel Howard and Roger Williams in Providence, Rhode Island. That's that history. You don't find that nowhere in the Bible. You got to go to the encyclopedia to get it, neighbor. Yes, Anything that's not in the Bible is too late. 
for the bread. Oh, That's who they for the bread. The block of bread is shut down. Man. Yes, sir. They're just too late. It's amazing to me. Peter even got mixed up in this same stuff. He was really did because after Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, oh, sir. he said, put this over there. Yes, in Matthew 16, 18, he said, well, I know we all know it, but let's just read it. Because Peter got himself in some trouble. And I'm going to look at that real, real quickly. Quickly. Peter got himself in some trouble. When Jesus told him in Matthew 16, 18, notice what Jesus told him. And I say also unto thee, uh -huh. that thou art Peter, Breathe. and upon this rock I will build my church. Upon this rock. I will build my church. Now that's what Jesus told people. All of us can agree with that. Is that right? Now let's go to chapter 17. Chapter 17. And verse number 1. Hold it. Go back. After six years. Six days. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. After six months. Six days. After six weeks. You see, it doesn't take long, neighbor. Amen. For somebody to tamper with God's word. You saw that last night? Uh -huh. All that truth that preached. And then the ungodly counselor had to go out there in the parking lot and try to undo everything I taught him. Oh, so, had the opportunity to question me here. It doesn't take long Amen. for people to try to influence you to do it. You know, I'm so glad we got the Bible. Because if I hadn't been writing the Bible, I'd never have put that in there about people. All right. After six days, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus came yeah. with him. Peter, James, yeah. and John, his brother, up yeah. on a high mountain and was transfigured before their reading. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, uh -huh. and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses, and Elias talked with him. Uh -huh. Then Peter, then after Peter, rather, and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Great. If thou wilt hold it. Hold it. I want everybody to pay attention to this point. That's right. <laughs> if thou wilt, do what? Let us make three, make here three tabernacles. Hold it. How many? Three. How many tabernacles? Three. Three what? Tabernacles. Tabernacles. Yes, sir. Peter wanted to make three tabernacles. Yes, sir. Now, Jesus Christ lived and died under what law? Old Testament. The Old Testament. Uh -huh. Stay with us. Peter wanted to make three tabernacles. Now, I dealt with that tabernacle song last night. Let me deal with it just a, 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 a little different, different way here. I want every Bible to turn to Exodus 26. Now, in Exodus 25, I dealt with it last night. When I drew that tabernacle and gave you the measurements and all of that, you'll see that in Exodus 25. When, she, when God called Moses up on Mount Sinai, when he gave Moses the first written law that man had, he gave Moses instructions of how to build that tabernacle. Now, in Exodus 26, mm -hmm. and verse number, Exodus 26. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, I want you to stick with me in. And don't get lost in this, because we got to come back to Matthew 17. Mm -hmm. Exodus 26. Now, here, Peter wanted to be a free tabernacle. Right. Only the one. Old Testament law is still in effect. Yes, sir. Right. Still in effect. Uh -huh. Exodus 26, uh -huh. verses 1 again. Read well, uh -huh. thou shalt make a tabernacle with ten curtains of fine swine linen, Three. and blue, Three. and purple, Three. and scarlet, and Three. 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 works shall thou make them. Three. The length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and every one of the curtains shall have one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. And thou shalt make loops of blue upon the edge of one curtain from the Celebrates into the company, and likewise shall thou make in the uttermost edge of another curtain in the company of the second. Mm -hmm. Fifty loops shall thou make in the in one in the one curtain, and fifty loops shall thou make in the edge of the curtain that is in the company of the second. Now watch verse number six. All right. And thou shalt make fifty tack tack of gold, and couple the curtains together with the tack, and it shall be one chapter. How many? How many? One. How many? One. How many? One. How many? One 
one tabernacle. Peter wanted to be a free. God said, I'm going to give you Moses these instructions. When you build it, it wasn't going to be a tabernacle for those people over there in Goshen, and a tabernacle for those people yeah. over there and, uh, and, and all of those seven nights, and a tabernacle over there, and a tabernacle over there. There's going to be one tabernacle there. Yes, sir. Just like I told you last night, everything in that tabernacle is a type of the New Testament church today. Yes, Just like it was only one tabernacle back there, there's only one church today. Yes, there's only one church today. Drop down and some of that. Number three. Right. It says, And thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof which was shown thee in the mount. Uh -huh. Thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of cunning work, with cherubim shall it be made. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of silver wood, overlaid with gold. Now here in verse 30, you still get what's going to go on in this tabernacle. Now all of us can agree that God said that was going to be, going to be one tabernacle. Now, let's go to chapter 27 and see how long was this tabernacle going to last. Look at chapter 27 and around by verse 21. In the tabernacle of the congregation, without the veil which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall order it from evening to morning. Read. Before the Lord, it shall be a statute forever unto their generation. How long? Unto their generation. How long that tabernacle was going to last? Unto their until their generation of the end of that second dispensation, neighbor. When that second dispensation ends, that's when the tabernacle was going to end, friend. Because the New Testament church was going to come in. Isn't it interesting that God closed, closed down that patriarchal worship before he brought in Moses' worship? Isn't it interesting that he shut down that tabernacle worship before he brought New Testament worship in? You know why? Because God only going to allow one worship at one time. <laughs> one worship at one time. There's no such thing as all these different worship trains, right? There's no such thing as now go back to Matthew 17. Go back to Matthew 17. When God called Moses up on Mount Sinai, he said there was going to be one tabernacle, one place of worship. After six days, Peter taken with Jesus taken with them, Peter, James, and John, and his brother, uh, up on a high mountain, and his face did shine in the sun. Peter said, Lord, it's so good for us to be. If thou will, no, Peter wanted to open up his own construction company. If thou will, he wanted to go into building business. If thou will, let us make great tabernacles. One for you, Lord, because I don't want to disrespect you. So one for you, Lord, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now what else he did? Verse 5 said, while he yet spake. Hold it. Why what? While he yet spake. Let me tell you something, friend. Let me tell you something. While Peter yet was running his mouth, while Peter yet spake, it's interesting to me. You remember when Jesus Christ was in that garden of Gethsemane? He prayed three times. Oh, is there any other way? Let this come pass. And they were, God wouldn't let it pass. You remember when Jesus was standing in that Ketron Valley and he saw those men coming after him? He didn't run. He didn't run at all. When they came in that Ketron Valley, they got. You remember the one that I kissed? That's the one. The one that I kissed you? That's the one. They came and got Jesus Christ. Maybe God didn't do nothing about it, did he? Uh, you remember how they got Jesus and they marched him down through power call and they began to stay on him. And maybe God didn't do a thing about it. God didn't do nothing. You remember they took him and he tied him to a whipping pole and they began to scourge him. Do we call it sometimes that kettle of nine tail? That blue jello. That's when those, those seven tails, they got jagged pieces of bone and metal and glass at the end of those tails. And they began to beat the back of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And they were, God didn't do a thing. God didn't do a thing. They began to whoop him up a cavernous hell, neighbor. And then when they put that particular, that cross being that particular on his back, he crumbled up under the wheel. And they were, God didn't do a thing about it. They got him on the floor, hell, neighbor. They stretched him high and wide, neighbor. And he said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And they were, God didn't do a thing. They took a spear and they ran into Jesus Christ. Flat out. So whip came down. I blood and water. Neighbor, God stood up there. He didn't do a thing. So when Moses said, Lord, let us be a free child. Neighbor, God stopped him before he got one time. God stopped him before he got one time. While he had faith. Because he was temperate. And God's evil redemption. God stopped him before he got too tall. 
while he yet faith, a voice out of heaven said, this is my beloved son, and whom I'm held free. There is the hell. Don't that mean don't listen to Moses? He was there. Don't that mean don't listen to Moses? He was there. Yeah. Doesn't that mean nobody got in the business in the building business? There was only one church there. That's all it is. There's only one church. I know the first time people hear that. When I'm 80 years old, I ain't never heard this before. But I want to tell you something, friend. That's no excuse. Long, 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 long time ago, your great, 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 great grandma and your great, 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 great granddad didn't know a thing about country hands, breakfast bacon, southern bell sausage, pork chop, and spare ribs. But it was in the halls all the time. It was in the halls all the time. All you needed was a meat butcher to go in that hall and cut that bacon out there. It was in the halls all the time. The time.
We know, brothers and sisters, from Acts 2, that there were some 3,000 that obeyed the gospel. Verse 41 tells us that. Now watch verse 42. Yes, sir. And they, uh -huh. they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. In what? In the? In the apostles' doctrine. Apostles' doctrine. Yes, sir. Read. And fellowship. And in the fellowship. Hold oh. it. I see it. We're going to have to learn this tonight. Yes, sir. I see it. I see it. Now, where fellowship there is not, she could eat seven Sunday, four Sunday fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> We got three basic words for the word fellowship. Koinonia, koinone, and an adjective koinonas. And it actually gives us 51 English words and have to be dependent upon context. I know that's not food fellowship because it's surrounded by other items of worship that we do on the first day of the week. The next thing that I want, us to, I want to point out to you, this definite order will be right here. It's in between, in your Greek New Testament. And I'll tell you something. You can try. You can study. You can take the materials of anybody you want to. And then I'll tell you the same thing. They can show it to you, just like I can. This definite article B right here is in between each act of worship. Uh -huh. Each act of worship. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Mm -hmm. Preaching, teaching. And in the fellowship. This word fellowship here is distribution has to do with our what? Giving. Giving on the first day of the week. And in the breaking of bread. That's the Lord's Sabbath. And in the prayers. What's my point? I'm telling you something, friend. I love you, and I'm going to help you. This definite article B, it separates each act of worship. Amen. It does not allow you to sing while the apostles are preaching. It does not allow you to preach while the apostles were gathering the contribution. It does not allow you to sing pray or take up the Lord's money while the Lord's Sabbath is going on. Amen. This is God's power. Now what happens is because we've never heard this before or because we're so used to doing things one way and had never been taught, then what happens is we begin to cringe and we begin to try to undermine or even make other laws where well, you don't have that law in the New Testament. Amen. This is God's plan. It's not my plan. It's God's plan. Every act of worship is done independently and separate from other acts of worship. Amen. Because, shepherd, I've got that definite order to be. That's why. Why is it that only certain things are being done with the singing, and they're not being done with the preaching. Amen. I go on and, and preach while the Lord's ever going on this way. Now, Amen. My are doing that. Amen. They have turned it out to nothing but theatrics. Yeah, yeah. And that's a violation of Matthew 6. Because you don't do your arms before men to be seen. That word be seen as fair fraud, yeah. but we get our English word the age of fraud. We don't come up in here like we are on stage. We come up in here to worship God Almighty. That's what we do. We don't come up in here to feel good about our faith. We come up in here to make sure God feels good about what we are doing. We need to realize that as a people. Amen. Each act of worship is done separate and apart. This is God's plan. Now, if there is another plan in here mm -hmm. that I somewhere have missed, show it to me in the Bible. Mm -hmm. 
we have to make sure that we are holding to the truth and what we are doing. We can't be so proud and be so stubborn. Because when we learn better, we ought to do better. Right. We ought to do better. Right. We have to. God's grace is not going to cover us for doing something wrong now. That's right. That's right. It's not going to cover us. Mm-hmm. Ignorance we can't get back. That's it. That's it. There were 3,548 people lost their lives. Yeah. According yeah. to Numbers chapter 1, verse 45 47. Mm-hmm. And you know those people, you know, how, you know they lost their lives in 40 years. Mm. 40 years. And you know what? In those 40 years, they were averaging at least 15,000 funerals a day. And it didn't change those people. It didn't change. I'm talking about hard-headedness here. Amen. Only two people, when they left Egyptian bondage, went over in Canaan land. And that was just one Canaan land. The rest of them lost their lives. Yeah. Because they were hard headed and they were hard hearted. That's right. That's right. They were a rebellious, yeah. stiff necked people. Yeah. God loved them so much, mm-hmm. He did everything for them yes. to try to get them mm-hmm. to hold to His path. Yeah. But they were so hard headed. Yeah. They surrendered their lives. Mm-hmm. And they were having funerals on top of them. Yeah. You think about that. Over 15,000 funerals a day. Uh, 603,548 people died in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah. Because they failed mm-hmm. to adhere to God's plan. Yeah. This is God's plan. I wouldn't stand before you and misrepresent that one passage of scripture, neighbor. Yeah. I wouldn't. We have to do what's right. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. We have to. We want to go to heaven. Amen. We have to do it by God's authority. Mm-hmm. Let me show you something else. In Acts 4. In Acts 4. Let me show you something else. Here in Acts chapter 4. Here Peter and John is accosted in verses 4 and 5 by the local magistrates. Mm-hmm. When you get to verse 5, Notice what the Bible says. And it came to pass on the morrow uh-huh. that their rulers and elders and scribes and as the high priests and uh-huh. the high priests and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were kindred of the high priests were gathered together as groups. Mm-hmm. And when they had set them in the midst, now notice, now notice, please pay attention. Just keep up with it. They set these creatures in the midst and they asked them a question: By what? Power about what name have you done this? Now what are they talking about? Authority. They are talking about those preachers that healed that lame man in chapter 3. Uh-huh. The context actually starts in chapter 3. You remember when they healed that lame man in chapter 3? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Now you come to chapter 4, the local magistrates have heard about this. Right. And they, they grabbed those preachers uh-huh. and they set them in the midst and they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? In other words, who is the duly constituted? Where did you get your authority from to heal that same man? That's the question. And you know what Peter does? Peter doesn't scratch his head and say, oh, what you mean authority? Let me tell you something, friend. If you knock on some of these doors around here, these church doors and ask them, where did you get your authority mm-hmm. to have this denominational church? Mm-hmm. You see, today, people don't realize. Please hear me carefully. Today, people do not realize that they have no religious authority to advance religious ideas. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, there is not a man alive have no authority to advance a religious idea. That comes from God. And not me. When you drop down in verse number 10, this is the song said in all your builders, a verse number 10, be it known to you. Uh-huh. 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 Uh-huh
whom he crucified, whom God raised from the dead. There it is right there. Peter says, I got my authority from Jesus. That's who I got my authority from. From Jesus. Don't sit there and tell me we don't recognize authority. We know authority, friends. We just don't want to recognize it when it comes to the church. When you go to a restaurant, you go to a restaurant, and you see, uh, you see on the door, authorized personnel only. Now, do you interpret that sign that you got authority to go through that door? <laughs> Now, if you think you do, let me just change this. Go down to that police station yeah, yeah, yeah. and see a sign say, authorized personnel only. Yeah. Go through that door if you're bad. Uh, <laughs> Go through that door. <laughs> All right, if you haven't been given previous authority right. to go through that door, you're going to jail. That's right. That's right. I must believe it. 
Jesus Christ said in John 8, verse 24, If you don't believe that I am he, you'll die in your sins. Yes, verse 21, where I am, you can't come. Then, brothers and sisters, we need, we're going to have to repent of our sins. Confess Christ and be baptized into Christ. And the Lord will answer to the church. Yeah. We trust, we hope, we pray that we will follow the pattern. Let's follow the pattern. We don't save ground. And any time we deviate from that pattern, we're following the doctrines and the commandments of men. Yeah. 674. Wayne has selected. And you get your song, because we're going to sing that song tonight. And it just may be that all of us may be members of the church. And what you need might not be walking down the aisle. You might need to walk across the aisle. You need to beg somebody's pardon before you leave here. You better try to do that, friends. Amen. You need to shake somebody's hand and ask them for forgiveness before you leave and you better try to do it. Yeah. Oftentimes, we always make that delay. But I want to tell you something, friend. No man knows the day of the hour. Yeah. Yeah. You're here today and you're gone today. Yeah. But you can say, here today and gone tomorrow. No, you're here today and gone today. Yeah. You need to get whatever. You need to get straight with the Lord. Why not come while we sing?